really have like a story, but what I love so many today with the children is that they would finish John 3.16, you know, when you start telling them that verse, they would already finish it for Amen. you, but that was just my little thing. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sister. <laughs> I'm just so glad to be here with all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, so it's me and brother Robert, we're out soul winning. And uh, we've got a group of souls saved. And there was one time uh, where Robert was winning a soul to Christ. So what Robert was uh, running, winning souls to Christ. And there was this one demon possessed man. And pretty much he was just winning someone to Christ. And he started looking Robert up and down. He looked a bit strange, looked a bit weird. And he just started, well, he was, well, while he was winning that man to Christ, I just got his attention and I made sure that he wasn't distracting uh, that soul winner or that soul from being saved. And he was, uh, he was being blasphemous, he was being wicked, he was hating the Bible, he was hating Jesus, and it was definitely a spiritual attack. But yeah, that soul got saved and that guy just left. So praise God that devil just walked away and soul got saved. Amen. 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 Right. So I don't really have much of a story since I, this is my first missions trip, but it has been absolutely amazing going from never having saved. So I haven't saved anyone just yet, but I'm getting close. But to witness how every single one of you is able to project the gospel so well, it is actually inspiring, and I'm so proud to be here. That is only my story. Amen. 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 Uh, I wanted to tell a story about uh, my wife. I uh, hear we're from Adelaide in South Australia. And uh, my wife and I, like, when we go out soul winning uh, in Adelaide, uh, like, usually she's a silent partner and, like, she's, like, practicing learning how to preach the gospel. And, like, she'll talk to someone and, like, maybe if she gets stuck, like, she'd handball it to me. But, like, here on this trip, like, seeing everyone go soul winning, it's uh, encouraged us uh, to, like, do more soul winning and to be a talker. And on Sunday night, like, we're up that night, we were like practicing preaching the gospel to each other, and then she saw her first person saved on Monday, and it was a great event. <laughs> she's been ripping it up ever since, like on, on Tuesday and today, like she's been doing a great job so many, seeing many people saved. So it's a big encouragement. Thank you. Amen. So, yesterday we just flew in, Brother Alex and I, and a big group of us from Phoenix. And it was like a ten and a half hour flight, and we just got off the plane at like 6 a.m. We traveled through time and space for this mission trip, apparently. And man, it was so tiring. I can't sleep on planes very well at all. And well, Alex, of course, being so zealous, wanted to just get off the plane and go soul winning. So I just went with him and a few others, and we were at the college campus down in, what is it, Nadi? Yeah. yeah, we haven't even made it to Suva at this point, so we're down in Nadi, and outside of this college campus, there's this bus stop, and there's a few kids that we were talking to, and a really cool experience I had was preaching to a few kids, and then a few others walked by, and I didn't want to just let them pass me by, because there wasn't that many soul winners, and I just thought, well, why don't I try to get their attention? I gave them a few cards. I said, hey, guy, while I was preaching the gospel, this one guy, hey guys, we're from a Baptist church. This is for you. If you scan the QR code, it's a Bible way to have a video. And they just stopped and listened to me continue preaching the gospel to this other kid. And then four others came by and I kind of did the same thing. And like, before I knew it, there were eight people just surrounding me listening to me preach the gospel. And like seven of them got saved. I had to give the gospel like, four different times to keep people up to speed because people kept walking by at the wrong time. But it was really cool. It was a really cool experience. I've never seen anything like it. So thank you for that. All right, good evening, everyone. So I want to talk about um, seasoned soul winners. Now, we got soul winning every week of our lives, right? But something that's more special to me this week has been when, we give, when I give the gospel to a couple of people, they say things like, man, thank you so much. I really needed this. I mean, these kind of testimonies to me, it helps me feel so close working with the Lord. I'm saying that so here and go forth and weeping, bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. So it's those testimonies that as a continual soul winner, even from now, you know, I want to go soul winning for the rest of my life. Amen. But what helps me to go even more harder and more faithful is hearing them. I've never met them, but they say thank you so much for coming. Thank you for showing me this for me. And what happened today specifically is somebody got saved and then he's like, can I take photos of what you showed me? I'm like, yeah, sure, man, I'll give you. It's John, uh, Romans 3.23, take a photo of this. And then through the whole gospel, he was literally taking a photo of every single verse. And I was like, you know what? This is just a small thing that I've showed you. There's many more. You know, show this to your family, show this to your friends. 
Uh, and that's the testimony that you might experience today or this week. Uh, they just say thank you. Yeah. And that's a blessing for us as soulmates. You know, to keep going, never quit. And it's, it's a lifelong testimony that we have for the Lord. And it helps me grow closer with the Lord. But I know God's using me when I hear this. Thank you for coming. So that's a blessing I'm finding and so many. I just wanted to say thank you for the churches that hosted this. And the reason why I go on missions trips is because um, I'm not going to lie that sometimes I can go out week after week and maybe not even give the gospel once because I can't get past the introduction sometimes. And it used to not be like this. But when I, and I get a little discouraged. I know we shouldn't because we're still sowing the seeds and of course we still get rewards even if they don't get saved and all that. But when I go on missions trips, because I was exhausted going through time and space too, but then like when you get that first person saved and they are so grateful, it brought my partner to tears on one of them. Because you see how grateful they are? It just renews my spirit. So if you get me through another year of just like knocking a lot of doors and not getting a lot of people saved, not that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's my first mission trip and uh, just to add on to that story, I, I mean that was just amazing because like this guy was like really, he, he was really demon possessed, I mean I believe, yeah. and he was he was staring at us from across the street and he was smiling, he was giving some sort of demonic laugh <laughs> and I was preaching to this guy and it, it's funny that he came across the street to like, you know, he could have just interrupted the gospel anytime. But he just stood there behind me, almost like, like he wanted to get through. So like almost like there was some sort of force shield around me. He just stood there. He like he couldn't do anything. And then like he just turned around and then just went to my partner. And then my partner was able to distract him until I was able to get the guy saved. So to me, I mean, that was a supernatural experience because like, I mean, like, it could be angels. Could be I mean, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, you know, every time I get someone saved, it's it's always a supernatural experience. It's, it's the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, so it's like, you really want to pay attention to the kind of things that are happening around you. I mean, just like, passing by this guy, this homeless guy, is like, I just passed by, I'm holding a trip, and he's like, please, please. And then that scripture just got, got through my mind, I was, I was, I was thirsty and he gave me a drink. You know, so it's like, you never know, what if, what if you're like, talking to an angel unaware? And it's like, you know, going to the college too, the college is like, 90% of the people that you talk to will get saved. So we were able to get, I was able to experience that with Rafa. I just met Rafa yesterday. He was my silent partner. I, I felt like having him uh, be a silent partner and, and having to pray during that, my gospel presentation was like spiritual steroids. It just made that point. It, yesterday was the best day of my life as far as that. So in 24 is the most I've ever gotten in one day. I mean, that's just crazy. So I mean, God, God truly is blessing this place. Uh, because they're humble, and he's blessing them by sending us. So it is a blessing to be here. So going to the college today, the college was extremely receptive. If anybody hasn't been to the university yet, I highly recommend going there. And just to add on about uh, what this brother said about being thankful, a lot of people were very thankful today when I gave them the gospel. And actually a lot of people offered to give me food, to either pay for food or they already had meals that they had bought with their own money. And I sat down with them and a lot of them, they offered to give me some, some food. That happened probably four or five times a day. One guy, he offered to buy me coffee. They were very grateful. They wanted to do something in return for me. And so the people here are very nice. They're very friendly. Uh, I think almost everybody you know you talk to, with few exceptions, they at least want to hear. Obviously, not everybody's going to get saved, but many people want to hear the gospel. They want to learn about it. So uh, I highly recommend going to the university if you haven't been there yet. So. Um, so I have two quick stories. Uh, so on Monday, I was with um, Larissa and this lady, we were preaching the gospel to two people, and so I saw this lady just walking by, back and forth, and when I was done preaching the gospel, she came up to me and she said, I want to hear the word of God, and so I preached to her, and she ended up getting saved. On Tuesday, she said, um, I saw her again in the afternoon, and she said she came in the morning uh, looking for us, but she couldn't find us, so she came back in the afternoon with, uh, I think, three of her family members, and uh, she, she encouraged them to listen to the gospel and uh, Emilio preached to them and I think two of them got sick and she said that she wanted them to hear the gospel before they left the island so that was, that was pretty cool and she was recording it so that was pretty cool um, 
today we had a guy, me and Cassia had a guy um, that we approached and he said that, uh, he was very thankful as well, but he said that it's, it's funny that we stopped him because he was going to go to a job interview and he was going to have the taxi drop him off right in front of the, the job, but he, he said that something inside of him said, told the taxi man to drop him off at the corner and so he walked and walked and that's where we stopped him and he's like this is this is a sign and he said it's funny because his, his name in um, in Fiji is saved and so he ended up getting saved as well so we had this experience too all right guys sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna double up i know some of you guys have heard this story already but i can't get over it so my wife is similar to sister chloe She's been a professional silent partner for three and a half years. Some of you know we were in Japan for a long time. She was a silent partner over there. Since she's been in Australia, she's been working up her courage, working up her courage. And so today she finally got her first solo salvation. Amen. But it was very interesting for two reasons. The first one is when I came back to her, and apologize for taking my time, whatever I was doing. She said, oh, it's okay. I just got two people saved while you were gone. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, the way that she got them saved, we've always joked that our son, you've met, most of you probably have met him, he's so cute that he can be bait out of soul with you, right? Someone comes up to a little baby and they're like, oh, and you preach the gospel today, right? So today, the woman that she got saved came up to say hello to our little baby. Hey, how you doing? And he grabbed onto her finger, and he wouldn't let it go. <laughs> she went to say, oh, sorry, baby, I have to go to work. And he wouldn't let it go. <laughs> so my wife clicks. Oh, I have to give her the gospel now, I guess. All right, that's a sign. So this lady gets the gospel, and she gets saved. Even a little baby God can use to get saved. Isn't that amazing? So Sammy's first salvation as well. <laughs>